Sure, so my name is Brandi Canali. I'm the CEO of Romy. We're an urban operator. We're based in South Florida and New Orleans, and right now we have around 600 properties. Sure, so people might know us as Sextant Stays, um, and we were Sextant for about seven years. Um, and so there were some, you know, problems with the name um, from a branding perspective. Um, it was difficult for people to say. Um, people didn't know what a Sextant was. It's a navigational tool. I think about like five people knew what that was in total. And so from a, like a recognition perspective, it was difficult to kind of educate the guest. Um, and then you know, originally it was supposed to be a bit more landlord and investor facing and the kind of the guest facing side wasn't as important. Our own direct website wasn't as important. And then over the years that obviously changed, but we kind of were like in too deep. <laughs> and so and we did the best we could with our branding at the time. But we, um, you know, raised a Series A and we thought, you know, this is a great time to Kind of, we get kind of one shot to rename the company because some people do a rebrand and it's just kind of like a facelift. They change the colors, maybe the logo, but changing like the whole name is very labor intensive. It's pretty expensive, so you kind of have like one go to get it right. Yeah, so I think from what I'm finding is, um, you know, from an industry perspective, uh, you know, if you Google Romy, not really much comes up. Like if you're going to, you know, you'll have all the articles from our Series A, but all of the, you know, the seven years worth of information is all sextant. So you might meet some people in the space who you're like, I, you know, I have no idea, like, why am I listening to you on this panel? You know, why, you know, why is what you have to say relevant? You have to be like, okay, well, you know, we were this other company for a long time. So it's just kind of getting out there and reintroducing ourselves. I think our new brand is so fun. It has such a personality to it. Um, and so it's been really fun doing that. And then from the guest side, that's actually been something that's been um, surprisingly easy. So anecdotally, in the first two months that we've rebranded, Romy gets mentioned so often in the reviews. And that really didn't happen before with Sexton. Um, maybe they'd say Sexton or they'd like just misspell it or something like that. And with Romy, it's appearing in a lot of our reviews. So that like, you know, thankfully it's, um, we were right <laughs> that it would be a more, um, you know, in, a name that's easier to say, something that's more appealing in general to, to the guest. But we want all of that funding to be focused towards expansion, but I think our expansion strategy is a little bit different than some um, might think. We're not going to just throw a bunch of pins in the map right now. Our focus is really on our existing markets, maybe one or two new cities in the next couple, you know, in the next year or so. But we want to make sure that we're taking deals that are really sound deals, that the, we have good landlord partners, so that we're not getting ourselves into a situation that we don't want to be in. Um, so we're being very thoughtful and methodical about the deals that we're taking um, and things like that. So the, you know, obviously the rebrand required some funding, so some of it went to that. So kind of just really shoring up the new brand, showing up our existing markets. Um, and being thoughtful with our expansion. I, do, I would say that's not off the table. It's not something that we're currently pursuing, um, but you know, I'd never say never. <laughs> So Miami and South Florida carried us through the last couple of years. Um, New Orleans totally reopened, so our portfolio there is like you know doing great, it's fully recovered. Um, and so I do think you know it's um, you're seeing people travel internationally now more, which is great for all of our European counterparts. But you know now we're starting to see I think a little bit more of a return to reality in terms of uh, you know travelers, you know travel occupancy, pricing, all of that kind of thing. I think we were on a little bit of a high for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, luckily, especially in South Florida, we didn't really, we had a quicker rebound than I think some of the other urban areas. Yeah, so I think that there's no, like, solid blueprint for scaling. Everybody goes about those jumps from, you know, 20 to 50 to 100 at like a different pace. And, you know, for us, it was like a real baptism by fire. We just 
because of COVID, had these deals pop up and we got a whole bunch of them all at once. And it's, you know, you just take it and kind of run with it. <laughs> and so my advice was, you know, if you have a kind of that quick growth spurt, make sure that you take some time and get your processes and get, like, get your house in order, you know? And then also being very methodical and purposeful with your tech stack solutions. Um, you know, that's kind of like a hot topic all the time now, but making sure that the vendors that you're using are good for scaling because it becomes much more difficult to change once you're bigger. And I know that because I've done it many times and it gets much harder as you get bigger. Well, so I'm part of Good Morning Hospitality, um, and so we've had the opportunity to sponsor a room here and, uh, you know, get to interview different people in the industry. So I'm kind of wearing two hats right now, um, but it's great because from an operator perspective, I also now get to kind of meet the kind of European operators and vendors who I don't usually get to interact with back at home. So um, from the podcast side, it's great because we get to interview cool people and from a vendor or from an operator side, sorry, I get to meet people that I don't usually get to talk to.